What's up guys, Eric here from TechSode TV and today we're going to be taking a look at the top 5 unknown features on the Surface Book 3. We're going to start with something I just learned myself and it's the fact that you can separate the tablet portion from the base manually if this button isn't working. This is something that I wish I'd known earlier because I just uploaded a video where I was trying to forcibly remove the tablet from the base by pulling really, really hard. Jeepers, man. Huh. Um, that's a problem. That's a really big problem. If you're wondering why I was doing that, you can go ahead and check that video out by clicking the link at the end of this video or by clicking the link down in the description. As you've probably guessed by now, you don't have to pry super hard to get these two to separate manually. All you need to do is insert the end of a paper clip into the sixth hole up the side of the tablet and insert it at a 45 degree angle. Just push in a little bit and you'll be able to disconnect the muscle wire which is holding that side of the tablet onto the base. Now you need to hold that part separate while moving over to the other side of the tablet and doing the same thing on the sixth hole up on that side of the tablet. With a little bit of finesse, you will be able to have safely separated the tablet portion from the base. Speaking of detaching the tablet from the base, you can actually now detach them up to two times faster compared to the Surface Book 2. That may not sound like much if you've never used a Surface Book before, but it really does make a considerable difference, especially considering there's been times where I've had to wait six, seven, even eight seconds for the Surface Book 2 tablet to disengage. Now that we've separated the tablet portion from the base, I wanna direct your attention to this bottom port right here. This is where all of your power and signal connections are between the tablet and base portion of the Surface Book 3. Now what a lot of people don't realize is that if you just wanted to take the tablet portion on a trip with you because you're not going to need a keyboard, you're just going to be watching some movies or something like that on the tablet, then you can actually charge just the tablet section by using the Surface connector at the bottom port here. So now you can pack a little bit lighter for your next trip. Within the camera app, there's a whiteboard mode which can be used to capture school notes or even a grocery list off your whiteboard at home. It even reorients the photo in case you took the picture at an angle. You can then quickly open it in Paint 3D, move things around, erase what you don't want, or write in more items. Then, when you're done, you can tap Menu, tap Share, and send it to your OneNote so you can access the list from your phone when you're at the store. Let's take a step back and talk about hinge durability for a minute. At the beginning of this video, I showed you guys a clip where I was pulling extremely hard on the hinge and the base trying to separate the two. The big takeaway from that is that this hinge is incredibly strong. If you watch that video, you'll see that I was pulling with all of my strength trying to separate the two and I could not separate it. Not only could I not separate it, but I did zero damage to the tablet portion zero damage to the base, and when I did eventually get them separated, oh, there was still no damage to anything. Not only did forcibly separating the two halves not cause any damage, but I once had my Surface Book 2 closed like this, sitting right next to my desk, and my 40 pound toddler came into the room and stood with one foot here and one foot here with all 40 pounds and nothing happened to the tablet. There's no damage at all, no flexing, no crack sounds, no nothing. Even though I thought for sure my screen was gonna be shattered when he did that, but to my surprise, nothing happened. So if hinge durability has ever been a concern for yours, it really shouldn't be. The new 127 watt charger is actually smaller than the 102 watt charger that shipped with the Surface Book 2, which is pretty awesome. You're getting more power in a smaller package. But beyond that, the 127 watt charger also has another improvement up its sleeve and it has to do with this USB charging port right here. On the Surface Book 2, that port was only good for 5 watts of charging, but it's now been upped to 7 watts of charging. Now, 7 watts may not be a ton of power to charge your peripherals with, but it is enough juice for you to be able to leave your smartphone charger at home and just bring a charging cable instead that you can plug into this power brick here and charge your phone overnight. And I don't know about you, but the less stuff I have to bring on a trip, the better. 
Let me know how many of these features were new to you down in the comments below. And also let me know if you guys are gonna be picking up a Surface Book 3 for yourself. I've got one more Surface Book 3 video coming up that you guys definitely don't wanna miss. So be sure to click that subscribe button and turn on notifications because if you don't turn those on, you won't be notified when I upload the video. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.